So do a quick check. Say, my name is... My name is Nate. And I'm Phil. And we're Commanderin. Okay. Us, we are uh, back. Let me put the water down. Uh, and uh, we're doing an episode tonight about uh, the Walking Dead secret lair because uh, it seems like that's something oh, it's the community is definitely wants to something talk about. we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. it. Uh, there's just so much controversy going mm -hmm. on around this, that's uh, right. and it's just all the, all the rage to talk about right and, now. And since we talk about uh, since we uh, put a spotlight on community issues, uh, but never, ever talk about three banned topics, religion, politics, and Hearthstone, um, it is, uh, uh, this is something that's obviously on our minds as well as uh, the rest of the community. So uh, we'll get to talking about that. And um, one of the things you can expect from us from now on is either one or two game streams every, um, every week. And uh, we are, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as uh, an episode which we record here and then we'll put it up on YouTube for everybody to, to uh, watch. And um, we might uh, start producing audio uh, episodes as well for those folks who are subscribed to the podcast. Um, we are uh, both uh, employed full time and you're looking at the entire crew right now. So... We'll have to uh, figure it. out what we can do. Um, yeah, but first, uh, if you want to help the show and maybe add to the crew somewhat, tell all your friends and share the show. Um, we really appreciate it when folks do that. That increases the commander and family, as it were. And uh, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. You smash that button, ring that bell, or whatever it's called these days. <laughs> and go wherever it is you get your podcast from and subscribe to. I wouldn't smash that. That's usually a glass phone or something, and that's just no bueno to uh, to shatter. So uh, also, uh, you're probably watching this on YouTube. Um, you should subscribe to our Twitch channel, and the Twitch channel is, of course, twitch.tv slash, get ready for this, Commander and MTG Podcast. I know. I know it's a crazy name for a Twitch channel, and I think if we had a chance to do it over again, we'd probably shorten that somewhat, but uh, we didn't. Um, and, of course, if you want to support your, uh, uh, your favorite content creators, and that's us, uh, you can go to commanderandmtg.com slash donations, uh, which will also be in the show notes below on YouTube, and it helps us uh, keep the lights on in podcasts, yeah, and... Uh, you can't see it because we've moved it out of the frame, but we're about to set up uh, for a game stream right after this, and um, we could use some better equipment in that, too. Uh, everything that you give to us will go into the show and to make it better. Um, and uh, while you're there at uh, commanderandmtg.com slash donations, go over to the merchandise link and pick up a playmat um, or t-shirt. Actually, yeah. I, I'm I'll have to check to see if we... Uh, I don't think they're on the website right now. The website's in need of an update, and we know it. Yep, that is true. Uh, it's been a while. We just updated the Twitter uh, header as well. So, um, we have a wonderful show lined up for you. Uh, this episode, we're talking about the, again, the controversial secret lair, the walking dead drop, uh, and what to expect... What? Oh, and, my. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, and what to expect next from Commander. So, um, we are going to talk about the set first. Uh, the set being the secret lair. And, <clears throat> excuse me, the smoke is affecting me pretty bad. There's still a little bit of smoke in the air. Yes, the fires bad. have been crazy. Um, yeah, fires in Los Angeles. It's crazy. Uh, so, uh, the lair dropped yesterday, October 4th, uh, 2020. 
and it's available until October 12, 2020. Uh, it's supposed to ship sometime between the 4th of January and the 15th of February, and uh, the cost for each drop is $50. Uh, why don't you tell us how many um, cards there are? So in this drop, it looks like there's, uh, there's five token walkers, which mm -hmm. is the zombies, two, two zombie creatures. Two, two zombies. Um, and then there's five characters. We've got Rick, the steadfast leader, which was the, the last one announced. Well, technically the last character card announced. Yes. Um, Daryl, hunter of walkers. Glenn, the voice of calm. Michonne, ruthless survivor. And Negan, the cold-blooded. But it looks like there's also a legendary artifact equipment there, and that's Lucille, the bat. Yeah, Negan's bat. Right? Negan's bat. Yeah. Um, um, and and there's, then there's a there's a treasure token because right. uh, Negan gets treasure whenever he makes somebody sacrifice something, that's or right. whenever they sacrifice. That's right. Uh, it's pretty neat um, the way they've designed Negan. Now Negan may be a controversial character, and we'll talk about we'll talk that about a that bit. a little bit. Yes. Um, and uh, but and the mechanics for that uh, card are pretty neat. But we're not going to talk about the actual cards. You can look them up, although we'll occasionally make references like Rick's a great human commander um, in Mono White. You have to say it with that voice, too. I have to say it with that voice. Yeah, I that don't know voice. if I can do that one. No, you can. It's easy. Um, <laughs> Rick's a great commander in Mono White. You see? <laughs> see, it works. Um, now, everybody gets real, real um, uh, difficulties when they bring Mono White decks to the commander table. Yeah, yeah, because it's... <clears throat> it's tough. Um, the Birth of Miletus is pretty good for ramp, and there are very few white ramp cards. But, mm. well, you know what? That's for a for another show. show. Uh, and uh, we'll end up revisiting a couple of these topics that Commander has already revisited, but um, it's time for an update, for example, on some of the cards. So, um, one of the things we want to introduce, like we want to make uh, uh, clear for full disclosure is uh, we went ahead and we bought uh, the set, <clears throat> the Secret Layer Drop. And uh, we kind of bought it before, well, we decided to buy it before we knew there was controversy around this um, because uh, we're both fans of The Walking Dead. And Nate, you're a bigger fan than I am. Well, I'm a few seasons behind. It might be a little bit more than a few seasons. Uh, one of the things that you know about me uh, is that I don't watch that much television at That's all. Right. Um, and so in the past like six years, uh, my television viewing has been very, very minimal. And so The Walking Dead is one that I kept up with for a while. I think I got to season nine. They might be on 11 by now or 12. Yeah, so I guess we're not big fans, but... We However, <laughs> I did enjoy the show quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so there's, um, there's definitely some, uh, some people saying, you know, don't, don't buy this, um, which I think actually that kind of controversy helps with sales. <laughs> so, um, it's probably going to be one of the more popular secret layers. Yeah, I think so. In addition to that, mm -hmm. they, they, uh, announced it on the talking dead right. last night, um, after the premiere of the spin-off show that they just did. And so um, not only Magic players, but also the Walking Dead fans who may may or may not have known about Magic previously. That's true. Yeah. That's true. And um, so uh, I think what they're hoping for is a quick infusion of uh, people coming from the Walking Dead and into, uh, <clears throat> and into Magic, or at least hearing about it, uh, or I guess at least buying it. Mm. Right, like that's, that's yeah, at the very thing. least, right? Um, but there's some controversy in the magic community, and it created quite a furor. Um, some of which, frankly, whether you agree with uh, their decision to print these or not, was unacceptable. Um, and uh, we'll get to some of these issues, so we'll cover them uh, tonight. So, one of the biggest issues, and actually the first one that uh, came to my attention uh, in doing all of this, was uh. It's they're never to be reprinted, unless right. they walk that back. Well, so there was uh, an announcement from Wizards of the Coast saying that 
uh, they may reprint these in the future with uh, different skin, uh, same mechanics, similar, um, and so that it would then be a magic card. It'd be a functional uh, reprint. Yeah. These are magic cards. Yes, right. yes, they are magic um, cards. So, yeah, so that uh, they're never actually to be reprinted. They're um, looking uh, to make functional reprints of these. So, in a way, it's uh, almost as if these five cards, six with Lucille, are going straight to the reserve list, as some people have said that. Um, and in particular, since it was adver advertised for, uh, uh, like, targeting commander players, um, some people feel it's predatory uh, to commander players. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, I think without a doubt it's predatory to commander players. Yeah? Yes. I mean, they're feeding off of FOMO. It's only available for a limited Unless time. FOMO. <laughs> the fear of missing out. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the reality is that that is the way that the secret layer is designed. Mm -hmm. So um, the fact that that is what they're playing off of is a complaint that people have had about secret layer from the beginning. Right. Um, and especially with so many secret layer drops, I don't think anybody expected as many as we've had this year. No, we definitely um, did not. <laughs> and, um, and at this point... Um, these cards, they very clearly stated, if you're a commander player, you really want this. And it's, it's in the advertisements. Now they then said, no, this is for bringing in new people from the walking dead fandom, which, uh, I believe is, is quite accurate, but to say that they weren't targeting commander players is I think false. Yeah. It's a little disingenuous since all of them are legendary creatures. Since all of them are legendary <laughs> creatures. Some Except better than others. Yeah. Some better than others. But <laughs> all of them are legendary creatures. People are going to be making decks out of these. And um, then of course, Lucille is a legendary equipment, which mm, doesn't matter much except in Captain Sisse, but we're not going to go there. Um, yes. Yeah. And a couple of others too. <laughs> okay, gotta stop. Um, so, uh, one of the things that, um, is important as we, well, one of the aspects of this, um, that the community needs to remember is that it's totally okay to care about your game and be upset about things, uh, happening in your game while at the same time caring about, um, other things, right? Like Black Lives Matter or being uh, anti-fascist, which I realize is uh, political. That is clearly a political topic. So we're going to nip that one. We're going to nip it in the bud, but you can care about those things at the same time. So a lot of people, and this is in direct response to a lot of people saying like, wow, you should put so much energy into caring about these other things. And that's a silly argument. It's a specious argument because you can actually care about two different like, you can care about your car breaking down while at the same time caring about your kitty cat being sick, right? <laughs> and, and it's just silly not to, or to expect people uh, not to complain about one thing when there's, you know, they're concerned about another. Um, so, now one of the other issues we heard about is that Negan is um, kind of inappropriate, both in terms of art, because he's got... Lucille, and that's a bat with barbed wire wrapped around it, which, that's pretty brutal. Like, it's brutal. In and of itself. Um, Undeniably. And yeah. Negan is a brutal character. Yeah, Negan's a brutal character. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, and one of the complaints that I've read about, at least, is that he's a sexual predator. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but I don't know the character. Do you know the character? Yes. Oh. Okay. Um, so, Negan is very nefarious. He's a bad guy yeah. through and through. Um, now, there's there's arguments to be made that Rick is also a bad guy, to be honest with you. Well. Um, but this is this is a zombie apocalypse. So um, the the character Negan, um, the way the card is designed, and I don't know if you know anything about this. Um, it each of these cards basically kind of goes back to where the character was introduced. Mm -hmm. um, so Michonne. When she was first introduced to the uh, the Walking Dead uh, on the show, she had two zombies that she basically had on a leash that were her oh, protectors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She'd so cut she's cut their lower jaws off. Yes, yeah. so that they couldn't bite. Right. Yeah, and um, and so you know she later later no longer had that because they were then in the community, and so she had a community of protection. But it is um, clearly going to her roots and where she came stepped in. Negan is the same. It's. Um, uh, he entered the show, and there were 
two people killed. Um, and you expected one. So uh, yeah, yeah. here's Negan. I'm coming in during the battlefield. We're going to go ahead and uh, choose, and you're going to lose one or two characters yeah. off of your board. Um, That's a pretty cool mechanic, actually. You have to write it's it interesting. down and reveal it. Yeah. yeah. Well, because there's a psychological game there, too. And there's definitely a psychological game when Negan is involved. Mm. So um, he's a nefarious character. I don't think he's... I've, so I know I haven't seen the show where he's introduced, but I have read the graphic novels. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think I remember what you're talking about. But no spoilers, people. We do not <laughs> spoil things. I may have spoiled. Sorry. Here on Commander in. Um, and this is this is definitely from years ago. So uh, so maybe the time limit on spoilers, but um, spoilers. So Negan is a is a predator and um, and is a sexual predator, and so the one of the complaints is that that's inappropriate in an all ages card game. Yeah. Um, and uh, the argument that there are nefarious characters in uh, the magic lore is, I think it's accurate. We've seen and Wizards is actually banning some cards this year based on you know artwork or things that that well, um, yeah. are no longer considered acceptable. They contain uh, racist or religious overtones mm -hmm. that are, are not. A, it's arguable whether they were appropriate or not. At the time, <laughs> right. Uh, but they are certainly not appropriate now. And so this is the argument being made now, that this is not appropriate. Yeah. It's, not a, it's not a dragon like Nicol Bolas, who is nefarious, we all know. Yes, he um, is. <laughs> and has done uh, some, some horribly unscrupulous things. Uh, uh, there's a lot of villains um, within the magic yeah. lore. So, but this is a this is a character where it's very human, it's very realistic, um, and you know children play this game. So should they be exposed to that? Well, yeah. I mean, it's arguable. I've heard it referenced that this is a, a child's game, and except for uh, Dana, uh, Dana Fisher, and of course a couple of other people. Hi, Dana. You're she's Hopefully. amazing. Yeah, she's amazing. <laughs> um, she, you know, she has. Um, we've done recordings with. And, uh, oh, that's awesome! At, at conventions, anyway. So, other than the occasional child, it's hard to argue that magic is a child, you know, children's game. I'm pretty sure it says 13 plus. Now, I recognize that children 13 to 15, uh, 13 to 18, rather, uh, people 13 to 18 are still children. <laughs> um, uh, but there are some other cards that are extremely gory. Right, there are cards well, I, I told you that there's a couple of cards on the most recent sets that I just can't handle the artwork on. Yeah, that's right. Um, discontinuity with the fingers getting chopped off really yeah. gives me the heebie-jeebies every time I see it. Yeah, yet nobody has complained about discontinuity. Well, maybe I'm the only one who has a problem with it. No, no, I but it just, I it's like, a oh, visceral just... reaction yeah. response. And then the other one was, is the one where, um, uh, I think it's the cruel, where, the, where they're about to chop the cat's head off. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. I'm forgetting the name of it right now. Oh. But every I can't play it. I won't put that card in a deck because it the artwork is disturbing for me. Yeah, so uh then uh uh so we have the age inappropriate art, we've talked about that. Um anybody who's seen uh what is it, Dance Macabre, that card, mm. there are two corpses, bloody corpses entwined, and it's like that's not appropriate for children either, but nobody is really complaining about it. Um, so, uh, and then, um, let's see, and then, uh, the rules committee made a decision, uh, on, uh, October 2nd that, uh, the, uh, um, the cards would not be banned. Uh, folks were making the argument that it's not a magic card, it's got characters on it that don't belong in magic, and, uh, regardless of what that means for IP purity, right, um, and they are magic cards, and uh, really there's no reason to ban them according to the rules committee. And so what do you think about that? Well, I think that preemptively banning them um, would have definitely stayed a lot of the, uh, the arguments, and, and it would have appeased a very, very large portion of the commander community. Mm -hmm. um, and, and make no mistake, 
the majority of the commander community is behind banning this. Well, the majority of the Twitter. Of the Twitter, community. yes. All of the polls that I've seen have largely said ban this. Um, and uh, I think a preemptive ban, it, it would have stayed this, but it's not necessarily fitting. Mm -hmm. I think seeing what cards do is kind of where the rules committee goes. How does it uh, end up playing in the meta? Does it end up being overly powerful? Is it taking over? Um, and then they're making decisions based on that from what I've seen. Um, yeah, that's the standard so, way that they judge cards. Yeah, so and, I uh, think it's normal that they'll wait and, and see what happens. Hello, ultimate paunch. I think that's a great thing. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, I, I actually unreservedly agree with the Rules Committee. I don't think these should have ever been considered for banning, and people who are um, arguing that are arguing, we have a, two cats who are playing with each other, <laughs> and uh, once again, we don't have a set, and just like when we did it at my uh, house, um, uh, we had our kitty come visit, and I've been wondering, actually, when your two kitties... When we were going to get a cameo. <laughs> yeah. And uh, right now, one of them is uh, by the camera, and I'm quite nervous about this. So, um, uh, yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so you, are, you support the yeah. Rules Committee unreservedly. Unreservedly. There was no reason mechanically to ban these. There's no reason, uh, like, obviously, no reason uh, to ban them. Uh, and... Uh, the uh, there were, there have been cards when they were released they just needed to be banned right right mm -hmm. away like paradox engine it was clear um, or was it Lut Lutris the companion that um, no it was the the companion that requires was it Lutris I think I th no uh, it's the otter the, it's the, the red, one that blue one. Yeah. yeah the one no, that Lutris is the black white one that's oh. going into Athreos. Don't you, you don't you dare don't take away deck. Lutris. But the one that basically was uh, you didn't have to do anything in order to put it in a commander deck because yeah. it was just that you were using a singleton. That's right. Um, yeah. And so it became a you're adding a one hundred and first card with no no, no downplay. Yeah. yeah, no downside to it. And um, so and then Prophet of Crufix, of course, my dear. Beloved prophet of Crufix, who I miss. I miss her so much. <laughs> she needed to go. She needed to go. Sometimes things need to go. Oh, she needed I to mean, go. I don't see Daryl as being a card that's even worth playing. So it's not going to take over the meta. Yeah, it's, um, it's definitely not going to take over the meta. But he would go pretty well into a Jund-colored uh, um, deck that makes your opponents get thoughts of zombies. I don't... I mean, I I might not be looking at this right. I've been playing Commander for about a year now. Yep, yep. So there's a lot of things that I'm still learning. Um, and uh, I know that, that that's part of the, what, the reason that uh, you asked me to join you on the show. That's right. Because I have a, a fresh viewpoint and I'm actually at the uh, stages of learning um, where we can talk about some, uh, some deck builds and things. Yep. Um, so at the... At the end of the day, I know that there are some ways to use a card that I'm not going to think of right away. Yeah. I mean, um, we'll, see, we'll see what happens with Negan. But Negan yeah. is pretty good. Well, and the thing so is... So is Rick Grimes. Well, I think everybody agrees that Rick is good. I am seeing a lot of people saying Negan just is not a good card, and I'm seeing it differently. And they're I think missing... it's an amazing card. Yeah, they're missing Conjurer's Closet, they're missing all of the flicker effects. Yeah, yeah. flicker that, and, and, and the reality is that I think that that is much more powerful than people realize. Yeah. And Michonne is a pretty cool card as well. I mean, there's she ends up with Indestructible. Um, right. It's easy to equip somebody. Yeah. Um, and... So one of the, one of the arguments that's related to all of this is mm -hmm. the IP purity, yes. right? There and for what the, what for folks who uh, don't necessarily live in corporate America, IP purity means intellectual property purity, and so magic cards should be from magic worlds, right? And uh, to some extent, I uh, I get that, right? I actually. Um, agree if they had done magic versions of Rick's Steadfast Leader, Negan, whatever his comma is, um, <laughs> <coughs> then we wouldn't have... Sorry, I just said, hello, Luna. Uh, 
Yeah, just lay down there wherever you want, kitty cat. It's okay. <laughs> I'm sure you won't attract the other cat any minute now, and there won't be a fight on the table. It'll be awesome. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll, oh, there she is on the stream. That's a uh, stream we're watching here. So, uh, yeah, if they had made actual magic versions of these, like made Rick um, or made them all from Innistrad, for example, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be having this discussion. No, no, right? because they did it with Godzilla. Yeah, well, they did something different with Godzilla. They had they had a, a magic card, and then they put a new skin on it and called it Godzilla. Well, yeah, but they and they added a, a super name to it mm -hmm. that doesn't actually affect whether you know whether or not it's unique. Mm -hmm. They added art to it. They changed the artwork, um, but they didn't actually make non magic cards for Godzilla. Um, and, uh, this is... Ninja. And the argument is very, uh, it is that if they had done that, if they'd handled it in the same way, then this, this wouldn't have been such a problem. Yeah. And I, it doesn't take away the Negan is inappropriate argument, but it does take, uh, it does fit with the, uh, unique cards, which, um, you know, a lot of people are feeling betrayed because uh, in the past there's been, uh, comments mm -hmm. made by, um, by Wizards of the Coast, saying that they would not do that again, um, that it was problematic when they did um, the the dragon for Dragon Con, mm -hmm. um, which then later they made accessible. Well, that was Nilathne Nilathne Dragon. The Nilathne yeah. Dragon. It was hugely controversial. Yeah. And um, and there was definitely some promises made that hey, we're not going to do this to you again. So people feel as though they are being betrayed. Um, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I'm kind of, uh, looking forward to the, uh, oh, did the audio cut out? That's a good question. Let's find out. Well. Let's find out together as we check the stream, uh, tech here. <laughs> and yeah, it looks a lot like the audio cut out. How cool is that? Oh, that's not cool at all. Oh, yeah, that's great. Oh, I wonder so, how long it was out. Yeah, I wonder how long it was out. <laughs> well, we have a recording, so uh, this those is of true. you who are on the Twitch stream, um, you'll uh, have to go back and listen to that period of time between when I hit mute and uh, that moment when I hit on you. So, and in the meantime, if we... Uh, it was profound. <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, we said the best things in that. We always say the best it things, must right? Been, it, must been, <laughs> what, it must have been a good 15 minutes or so. So, Ultimate Paunch, you let us know. You just keep scrolling if we seem to have a technical <laughs> difficulty and we don't notice because we saw that one. We did. We and, that. and you know, the, the live streaming, it's kind of new. We're having some technical issues getting it going, but uh, I think that this is going to be a format we'll use a little bit more yeah, yeah. and we're going to get much better at it. All right. So, uh, let's pull up the, the show plan once again. Right. So, IP Purity, I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to the Star Wars version. Like Star, Star Wars, Wars. Secret Drum. yeah. I mean, we're definitely yeah, there's get definitely. One of those, I hope. And uh, what else is there? Oh, you know what would be great? Rick and Morty. I would love Rick and Morty cards. Would would you? Pickle would you? Rick. <laughs> I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. These are some of the jokes people are making. Yeah. I don't know how uh, how funny they'll be when I mean, we actually I, come do. Come on, that. a Pickle Rick card. <laughs> Pickle Rick would be. Pickle Rick is awesome. Yeah. Well. That would be a card. Yeah, it would be like probably Rakdos, red and black, but maybe mm. I'm going too far. Um, okay, <laughs> so IP purity is an issue. Right. Uh, we almost had a Chewbacca standee fall over just now because of the cats. Um, and uh, uh, IP purity is an issue, and uh, we have to worry about this, I guess, next summer when they replace the core set with a Forgotten Realm set. Yeah, That's so... That's a dating uh, world. Right. Yes. Yeah. Well, and and before that, we've got the Strixhaven magic, which is clearly oh, uh, playing Harry on Potter. Harry Potter. Yeah. Um, you know, hopefully not actually crossing over with Harry Potter because uh, I would have a problem with oh. anybody supporting J.K. Rowling. Pinky bet right now that they do a Harry Potter secret lair. Oh my goodness! Pinky bet right now. What does a pinky bet do with this? I'm not the one releasing them. <laughs> Well, the pinky bet means uh, one of us will win. Okay. And it's me. <laughs> it's you because they're going to do... Because they're going to do a Harry you Potter. You know, if they do a Harry Potter... And, and here's uh, the, one of the things that I wanted to talk about is the cancel culture um, and people calling for um, 
you know, and it, and there's a lot of gatekeeping in any type of uh, environment where where uh, we have groups like this. And there's a lot of people saying, hey, don't play against people who bring these cards to the table. Yeah. Um, and what is gatekeeping again? Gatekeeping is where um, people are like trying to maintain the purity of something. And so they're telling you that you should not enjoy something that you do uh, because it doesn't fit in with their idea of what should be. Yeah. So the, in this case, people are saying, you know what, we disagree with this and therefore I'm not going to play with you. Um, yeah. I saw a whole bunch of people saying anybody playing with a TWD, the walking dead for those on the inside um, <laughs> cards would, uh, they would just not play against them. Yes. And so that's silly. Well, I think it's silly. Well, the thing is, um, I've played against people who came to the table and said, hey, I have a silver bordered card that mm -hmm. I think is a lot of fun and I'd like to play with it. Are you guys cool with that? Yeah. Now we're playing casual. Mm -hmm. Why not? As long as the whole table is in agreement, why not? Yeah. Now I would probably respect it if I came to the table and I said, hey, I've got the, uh, the Negan deck going on right now. And people were like, yeah, I'm not about it. Let's let's not. I would be fine. I'll grab my Hacktoast deck. Yeah. Um, Don't do that. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. Yeah. I, I won't play against her if she plays her Hacktoast. That's not true. You've been playing it against her. It, it, it is not true. So so yeah. the fact that people are calling out to other people and saying you know don't play people who are going to bring this um, that is gatekeeping. Yeah. And uh, frankly, I'm not about it. Why not let people have the fun they want to have? Mm -hmm. And if some people are going to find the Walking Dead cards to be fun, some people are going to find it to be collectible, there's a lot of reasons why people might buy them. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, it's going to be, you know, dependent on the table deciding, hey, what are we playing? Right. We sit down to the table and the first thing we say is, okay, what power level are we at? Of course we want to know, you know, hey, what deck should I grab? Right. Are you going to do anything? Hey, there's, we, if we have house rules we may as well play with some banned cards. Yeah. Why not? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're just playing at oh, the table. I will. Okay. I'll, you know what? I will play with my most beloved. My prophet. And I will cry. And, yes. and you will understand. <laughs> you will understand. I, I understand. Yep. Um, but you're, 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 when, when people are saying, you know, this is a perfectly legal card. Mm -hmm. uh, Wizards has said it's it's legal in legacy formats. Yeah. Uh, the rules committee has said we're going to support the you know the card. Yeah, the commander rules committee is allowing it at this time. Um, at this point, they're legal. Yep. So if somebody if, brings it to the table, they're allowed to. And if you come to one of the tournaments I run, whether it's online or not, you're all you're allowed to play any of the Walking Dead cards, um, unless they get banned because they're abusive. So, which we will see. Uh, now, uh, <clears throat> there uh, was uh, an attempt to create a uh, new format. It is still ongoing. In fact, I, I think it is actually ongoing right now where they're having a meeting. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, we're not going to talk about it except to acknowledge it. They have the identical ban list of Commander, except, guess what? They've added the Walking Dead cards. Six new cards, yes. basically. Uh, to the ban list, uh, and it's a reaction yeah. to that. The problem well, is it's surrounded by toxicity, isn't it? It is, it is. And it's of note that the um, that, that Mitch from Commander's Quarters, who uh, kind of started this, uh, dipped out immediately, and he even deleted the video um, where he, I think, jokingly at first was talking about captain format. Um, and the funny thing is that there was a captain format that was introduced in 2016 by, uh, by a player, which, yeah. Um, so it's kind of strange. Uh, it was, a uh, Scotty makes games said, Hey, I, you know, I, I homebrewed this version before he even knew what commander was. It's similar. Um, it's not the same thing that is happening now. Um, and, but it did make me go, Hey, I wonder, <laughs> um, I made a format. I know. Yeah. It's called bosun. Oh, and I didn't know. You have to whistle. You have to get a bosun's whistle and actually do the... Like whenever you cast your commander, otherwise I wonder how horrible that sounded. From the <laughs> oh, terrible. But uh, so I recommend you play bosun, and you just have to have a bosun's whistle, which is accessible. 
anywhere. You could use a penny whistle if you really want, but it's a different sound. And <laughs> when you cast your commander, um, of which of course has to be a legendary creature, if you don't do the bosun's whistle, it's counter. So there you go. Um, now Mark Rosewater <laughs> issued... <laughs> Uh, oh, just, that is a thing. I just went totally <laughs> off outline. Like, we have this computer up here so that there's an outline. I just went, I just surprised her with it. But it, in reality, I did create a, a format. We'll talk about formats mm. uh, throughout the, the show, actually, um, because we're going to highlight some formats. We're even going to talk to John at Pastime Games about uh, Raid Boss. Yeah. But I created a format called Hydra, the rules for which are on our website. Yes, they yeah, are. Yeah. Um, now, Mark Rosewater issued an apology. He did issue an apology on his... Um, Tumblr. Tumblr. Yeah. Yeah, on his Tumblr feed. Um, and, you know, the the Discord went crazy. Um, people were... And they basically said, we just can't keep up with this. It's so much. Yeah. Um, the Tumblr uh, got a lot of... And there was a very heartfelt um, note. And uh, I think Mark Rosewater's response... Uh, you know, was I, I need to take off the designer hat and, and give you more compassion. And I'm sorry that, you know, this is causing pain. So there was an apology. Wow. Yeah. Great. He didn't change his stance. No. But <laughs> there's some empathy there. Um, and, and I don't know, you know, uh, if that is too little too late for the magic community. I don't know. Uh, there was... There was kind of a mixed bag of response to it. People saying, thank you for acknowledging. People saying, hey, that's just not enough. Um, but the reality is they are paying attention. Yeah. So uh, to recap, um, <clears throat> also ultimate punch now that we have audio. Was that Bozen's whistle too much? Let us know. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, to recap, uh, we bought into the set. Um, we probably will make some decks with them. It'll be kind of fun, and maybe we won't be played with, but there we are. We're going to uh, buy them. They are cards that are never to be reprinted except through functional reprints. Uh, we discussed the controversy around Negan, and I'm recapping this in part because we may have lost that audio forever. Oh, wow. Yep, yeah, yeah, so... Um, and uh, Negan has, uh, uh, the complaint is that it has inappropriate art, although there is other inappropriate art already in Magic, and that seemed not to draw any complaints. Why, hello, kitty cat. Uh, that's Luna. <laughs> and uh, Luna is quite insistent. She's going to lay down in the dice tray now. Well, that's her dice tray. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> she lays down in it. Anyway, um, and uh, so uh, there, and there are people who are gatekeeping because they won't play with you if you play with the Walking Dead characters. Um, and uh, one of the big concerns is IP purity. Um, and again, I can't wait for the Harry Potter cards. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, and the mm. Darth Vader card and the Rick and Morty cards. <laughs> Gavin, if you're listening to this, we need Rick and Morty's secret lair. Absolutely. <laughs> not sure if you're joking anymore is the problem i'm not joking <laughs> if, if we open the door like this no kitty cat that's that's a that's velcro that's a velcro tie let's cover this up <laughs> i'm not you see i'm not kidding at all well um, and 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 one of the arguments with it being available for just a limited time is that um it's going to be inaccessible the cards will be inaccessible yeah. um and honestly there's so many inaccessible cards to commander players um Either because of limited prints or because of just the cost of them. Yep. Um, like Mana Crypt has been printed a lot, and it's still over a hundred dollars. It is, <laughs> and so there's there are some cards that are just they still are inaccessible to the larger commander community. Yeah. Um. So the reality of that is that commander is built around a lot of cards that are inaccessible. <laughs> yep. And then uh, on top of that, there's that reactive uh, format. Uh, and we've seen many commander-related formats. Um, Oathbreaker is probably the one that is uh, most well-recognized. Uh, there's competitive EDH or CEDH. Um, uh, and uh, then there were other attempts made, uh, and all of them have failed. And so we kind of expect this one to go away as well, especially given it was birthed in toxicity like this. So uh, yeah. just to be fair... Um, Ultimate Paunch says that the bosun's whistle is fine. <laughs> and um, Ultimate Paunch uh, ordered a set, but uh, says, I only really play casual with a small group mm -hmm. of friends. We used to have 
watch parties for The Walking Dead, so it seemed like a cool bit to get and play around with. Plus, this is something I hadn't thought about. You can play a, a game of Commander with five players, each one playing a different Walking Dead character. Mm. Yeah. Kind of neat. Um, so, uh, yeah, and uh, as Ultimate Paunch says, uh, despite the controversy and bad business practices, people are going to buy, so it's not like Wizards is going to learn the lesson. Well, and I think I said uh, early on, I think people will buy more. Yeah. Controver- There's nothing like a controversy to get sales up. That's right. Um, so, um, we were going to do a giveaway. Yes, we were. Uh, Are you actually going to have to run off set and, and get the uh, the numbers? Oh, no. I'll just uh, send them to him. Okay. I think so, we've only got one person on the chat, so... Yeah, yeah we're still, uh, <laughs> still kind of small, again, because we took the year off. Um, but uh, that's okay. We're back, and we're going to be doing this more often. So, um, Ultimate Paunch, uh, I don't know how you can reach out to us. You can reach out to us on Twitter, actually. If you oh. do that right away... We have him on Twitter. Uh, uh, we, we have a, uh, an arena code for you. That's right. We have an arena code just for you, Ultimate. <laughs> you're in the chat room um and if anybody else is in the chat room they better make it clear now and, uh, <laughs> we're gonna get a visit from luna again if she's not already in for it so um we're gonna go get ready for our um for our already late for nine o'clock yeah, game yep we're already late for our nine o'clock game um and we're playing with two of my friends um jim and john and i met them at my workplace and uh, now, Nate has met them and played with them a couple of times, and they're really cool people. I have no They are very cool girl. people and great commander players. Yeah. So uh, you can Jim, join us for some some Commander in After Dark. Commander in After Dark, because live there might stream. Be occasional swearing. And Lu- like just now, Luna just changed all of our pages on us. That's great. <laughs> um, so um, we want to thank everybody for tuning in. Um, the uh, theme song for the show was created by Nate Burgess, uh, the uh, former co-host of the show, Nate Burgess. Um, and um, <clears throat> the logo was created for the show by uh, Mr. Pickdale, uh, with assistance from Kelly DeLuca. And uh, the Commander and MTG podcast is unofficial fan content permitted under the fan content policy uh, and uh, features a, a cat that likes to basically destroy our set. So thank you very much, <laughs> Luna, for participating. We want to thank Luna for making the show just a little bit more interesting and also increasing our quotient of kitty cats. Well, her favorite character is Nicol Bolas. It is indeed. It is indeed. Um, and so uh, we have not been endorsed or approved by Wizards of the Coast and portions of the material used are property of Wizards of the Coast, although... Uh, I don't think so on this episode, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, thank you so much for joining us in this episode. Uh, uh, Probably listeners and viewers, she's now moving the Planeswalker dice. Um, You folks rock, and especially Ultimate Paunch, who took the time to join us on our feed. And we will call you out if you join us on our feed and uh, chat with us, and eventually we'll have all those fancy subscription things and whatever else people like to do. Um, So if you like what you just watched and heard, please consider donating uh, even a dollar per show or per month, since we're moving to that format probably, so we can keep on improving the show. Maybe get an actual set. that I don't know if we would keep it kitty-free if we got an actual set. I'm not sure if it's possible to keep things kitty-free. Well, if we, like, build a shed or something. Anyway. um, And there's the dice. So, uh, Luna will have something to say about being kitty free. We got to wrap this. All right. Thank you, everybody. Wait, wait, no, we got, we got to finish. Oh, so commander at mtg.com slash donations. If you want to help us out and keep us kitty free and maybe reduce the number of dice that Luna is uh, knocking over special thanks to our patrons who already show their support. We are probably going to change to a monthly donation schedule since we're releasing different content now, doing more streams. And that means uh, a significant drop in the monthly support. So please consider that when making a donation. We really appreciate it. And we could not do this without you. And we're grateful for your continued support. Um, so uh, on Twitter, we're at Commander and MTG. And individually on Twitter, I'm 
at Ketjak, K-E-T-J-A-K. And I'm at Mama Barbarian. Mama Barbarian. And that's M-O-M-M-A Barbarian. Yes. Okay, so uh, we'll see you next time. We're going to sign off now. And join us in a few minutes. We have to set up these uh, top-down cameras, and uh, we'll be streaming a game live. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, it's awesome. We love doing this, and we're going to keep doing it even more. Okay.